as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. What's really good and welcome back to another collaboration episode of the Sanchez Show and Real Fans Real Talk. As always, I'm your host, Eric Sanchez, a.k.a. Legend in Two Games. I got my main man with me, Anthony Jones, a.k.a. Trip Young. Trip, how are you doing today? Man, I think we're on about, what's this, about, about a nine-game win streak right now. I believe the Yankees are on. Um, I was actually at the ballpark for two of those nine, nine wins, one of them being against the Red Sox, one of them being against uh, Otani and, uh, and the Angels. I'm doing great, man. Yeah, we're going to get into some baseball talk. Uh, Yankees are on a they, – they, they hotter than fish grease right now. They're the hottest team in baseball. Uh, unfortunately, today's game did get rained out because of the hurricane that, that we're experiencing on the East Coast here. But we're going to get to that in a second. It is Sunday, August 22nd. We're about, what, three weeks from the start of the NFL season, right right around three weeks. But we got to get into the biggest news so far of the week, and that was yesterday's fight. Legend Manny Pacquiao originally set to face off against Errol Spence. Obviously, there was a change in the plans because Errol Spence had a detached retina. So he took on replacement Yordanis Ugas, who is also a champion in the welterweight division. Ugas was a big underdog going into yesterday. But if you didn't know any better, you would have thought he should have been the favorite. Ugas put on a classic boxing clinic yesterday. Trip, what are your thoughts on the legend Manny Pacquiao at 42 years old? This could have been his last fight. Yeah, um, I mean, it's crazy. See, and I was going to be, be easy and, um, and and not go into too much on Manny Pacquiao. But I had, I was I was going back and forth uh, today on uh, on Facebook. And shout, shout out to my, to, to, to my young boy. Uh, Jaleel, real Lil TV. Make sure y'all check him out on uh, Can You Dig It Sports. But he had he had posted up a comment, and you know, you know, Eric. Sometimes it bothers us when cats just you know take random shots at, at, at Money Mayweather. You know, when they when they when they pack you out, guys, and it's like yo, y'all y'all still y'all still can't you know take it take the fact that uh, that Floyd, you know, did what he had to do when they fought each other and got the and got the W, still undefeated. Still, uh, the 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 highest paid man in the sport of boxing, whether he's boxing professionally or exhibition, he's still making more money uh, in a boxing fight than pretty much the whole boxing uh, right now. And, you know, a lot of cats can't take that, you know, and they put their faith in Manny Pacquiao, and um, you know, and he goes in there and he gets his butt kicked bad. He looks bad in the fight. We're gonna call it what it is. He looked really bad out there. And you telling me that's the guy that was going to fight Errol Spence Jr.? Well, I, I don't know what did people think he was going to do against Errol Spence Jr. if that just happened. Um, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for y'all Pacquiao fans. It's not working out the way y'all had planned, the way I thought things would work out for you and for your guy, Manny Pacquiao. But uh, he, just, he just took another ass whooping this weekend. And I... I want to say it's done, but just because I just feel like, and we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago the, with the check chasing with uh, Manny Pacquiao, it, it, it's money over legacy at this point. So I'm not giving you no slack on this, Pac-Man. I agree. Um, first and foremost, shout out to Leo, because like you said, he, he is family to the show. Um, he puts on a great show himself on, on his on his platform as well. He's very knowledgeable, so we're not, we not knocking that. For anybody that don't recognize, th this glove right here been a part of the collection for a little bit. That's that's Floyd Mayweather. It, it is money team on this side. So I'm not, I'm not even going to try to pretend that I'm not 
uh, unbiased when it comes to my opinion on Floyd Mayweather. I will say this, though. Manny Pacquiao was a legend. No doubt about it. First ballot Hall of Famer. The resume speaks for itself. Eight division champion. All that good stuff. With all that being said, I get tired of the Pacquiao contingency that always wants to bring up Floyd's name and anything to do with Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. And, and the reason we started off by saying Leo, because I laughed at the comment. I didn't even engage him. I laughed at the comment because he, he, he goes on to say, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, Manny, what he did yesterday is stronger for his legacy than anything that Floyd has done in his last four fights. Uh, neither one of these guys need to improve their legacy. We talked about this, like you said, weeks ago. There is no... There is nothing else that you can add to the legacy, right? Like if, if Manny Pacquiao had won yesterday, are we going to say his legacy is stronger now because he won at 42 years old? No, it's still the same legacy. He, he is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Secondly, the fact that, that that fan base keeps having to bring Floyd's name up anytime Pacquiao is mentioned shows you that they know Manny Pacquiao is not better than Floyd Mayweather, Right. Floyd Mayweather's camp and the people who root and support Floyd Mayweather don't come up and bring up Manny Pacquiao every time something happens with Floyd. They just say, look, Floyd is, is, is the best of his era, and he's in the conversation for best of all time. Again, I leave that, that list up to somebody else because there are plenty of boxers that we never got to see, uh, obviously due to our age, that we didn't get to see in person. But you can't have a conversation about greatest of all time without at least including Floyd somewhere in that list. Right. Yeah. All that being said as well. The funniest part to me is we sit here, right, as people, as journalists, as fans of, of the sport of boxing, and we, we get upset about the fighters who were taken advantage of, the Muhammad Ali's, the Mike Tyson's, right, the Joe Frazier's, the Sonny Liston's, all these guys who were great fighters who had their finances screwed up by bad management. Floyd took the business into his own hands and revolutionized the game. Canelo Alvarez is following the Floyd Mayweather blueprint right now as we speak. And people are mad at Floyd for changing the game. How are you mad at Floyd for taking the power out of, out of the, the, the powers that be's hands and saying, Bob Arum, I'm not going to allow you to, to dictate my career. But we know Bob Arum still dictates Manny Pacquiao's career. That's why he is fighting for checks, as we talked about before. I'm not going to give the list of the six fighters like I did last time, Trip, because that's, that's already documented. So all this talk about legacy... Miss me with that, because when you fighting guys like Jeff Horn in Australia, you ain't fighting for legacy. And 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 just to throw a little nugget in there, too, because people love to say, oh, man, he took on so many challenges. Did Manny Pacquiao fight Canelo Alvarez when he was a 23 year old lion in the ring? Floyd Floyd did that. Right. He still ain't fight Canelo. He's never fought Canelo. Right. But Floyd took on that challenge when nobody wanted to fight Canelo. Did uh, Manny Pacquiao fight Marcos Maidana when Ma Maidana was mowing down everyone else in the welterweight division and and put Bruno on his ass two times? No. Never took that fight, right? He didn't fight Margarito until Margarito was already discovered to be a cheater. So let's not give him credit for beating Margarito when the sport was already done with Margarito. He beat Cotto when Cotto was damaged goods because that was Cotto's first fight after losing to Margarito. Mm -hmm. He beat De La Hoya, who he made, he drained him in weight to come down after, oh, Floyd had already beat him. He beat Ricky Hatton after Floyd beat him. So... Oh. You, you built up your resume on guys that Floyd had already beat, and now you're trying to improve your resume. And then last but not least, let's not forget, if you're going to tell me he took on all challenges and he, he was so fearless in the ring, he fought Eric Morales three times. He fought Juan Manuel Marquez five times. He, bought, he fought Timothy Bradley three times. Quick math, that's 11 fights against the same three guys. That's almost unheard of. We ain't seen stuff like that since the 1960s. What are we really praising in terms of those fights that you just keep fighting the same guys over and over that you already beat? Come on, bro. He's, he's, he's a legend. Don't get me wrong. He's a legend. He's going in first battle Hall of Fame. But let's stop the talk as if yesterday's fight in any way was going to change a legacy that was already cemented. Yeah, and, and I got to say this too. Shout out to the young brother, uh, Kenny Smith. He, he did uh, Jaleel's show uh, with us when we went on to... Uh, to guest host with uh, with those guys over there, shout out to them as well. But I gotta say this, man, y'all like you. We gotta like stop mentioning Floyd's gambling and going to the strip club and all of this, and and you judging how he spends his money. That man put his life on the line, his mental, his physical on the line for decades, earned every cent that he made. 
And even after, everything after, any boxing fight that he's done after the fact, whether it's exhibition, the, 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 the dude in Japan, you getting in that ring, you still putting your physical and your mental on the line every time you step in the ring. I don't give a damn about how much hundreds of dollars that man throw in a strip club, how many millions of dollars he spends on a watch. That man bust his ass to get where he is at, put some respect on his name and let him him live. As long as he ain't doing nothing illegal with his money, then we really can't say nothing. And then, you know, another thing is, you know, because, you know, guys want to try to play the, the good versus evil with Pacquiao and, and Floyd Mayweather. And, you know, oh, because Pacquiao does so much for the, the country and this and that. Um, you know, Mayweather does a, a lot of philanthropy as well. Like, let's let's be clear, you know, but those aren't the things that are publicized because it's a bigger it's a bigger headline if. If, if Floyd Mayweather spent $20 million on one watch, they're going to get more more clicks, more views than if Floyd Mayweather is out here putting money back into the community. If he's out, you know what I'm saying? Like if he's out here, when he's out here doing the positive stuff. So let's not act like, you know, it's always heavily promoted when minorities are out here putting their work in the community. That's a fact. And this talk of what Floyd does with his money is, is stupid, to be honest. Yes. Why are we worrying about what a man does with his money? Like, so, right. And, and like, last time I checked, Manny had issues with the IRS, so he ain't spent all his money wisely either. Like, if we, if we mad that Floyd oh. is living, a, right, uh, Manny, Manny Pacquiao has admitted that he cheated on his wife multiple times before he found God. He has had issues with the IRS for several years at this point. So that's not to take away from the good he's done. But like you said, let's not play this good versus evil because both men have flaws. And we're not judging a ring legacy off of what you've done outside the ring. That like I, I don't get when people try to do that. Like what you've done in the ring or on your field in your profession has nothing to do with the way you live your life outside of that. If you choose to have multiple women or spend money at a strip club or go gamble, that's your prerogative. You can do that. None of those things are breaking the law. So whatever he decides to do, he can do. But the other aspect of that argument, too, as you mentioned, people try, love to do the good versus evil. People also love to do the, well, Manny Pacquiao is more exciting to watch than Floyd Mayweather. For most of their career, that is true. Early pretty boy Floyd was very exciting. Once he became Money Mayweather, he became much more strategic, right? But guess what? Brett Favre was more exciting to watch than Tom Brady. Uh, Michael Vick was more exciting to watch than Tom Brady. Ain't none of them guys better than Tom Brady. So just because a guy's more exciting does not mean he's better at that craft point blank period and for the Pacquiao contingency y'all not gonna like this either Manny might not even be the second best fighter of this era because let's not forget Andre Ward was a beast as well during this era and right. Canelo yeah. right and Canelo might be even better than Pacquiao was too so again this ain't to slander Manny this is a wake-up call for the Manny Pacquiao contingency y'all need to stop this bias uh, uh logic and outlook on only Manny Pacquiao great fighter had a hell of a career, but stop trying to compare him to the best fighter of this era. And we know who that best fighter was. Exactly. Floyd, Money, Mayweather, the guy that's still getting the highest check in the sport of boxing, pro exhibition, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Floyd made more, made more of his last fight than Manny just <laughs> Yeah, and so, and uh, I want to see what the Manny contingency is going to say when Manny start doing exhibitions. Because Manny ain't going to turn down them exhibition checks. I, I hate to break it to y'all. Why, why, why would he? Why would anybody? Exactly. Listen, man, it, it, it is what it is. Shout out to shout out to the, to the money team. Right. Bro, shout bro, out to the money team. Where was that Dykeman um, a couple of days ago? He yeah, was up he at was, Dykeman. Yeah. He was in the city last week. Pat shout out to Dykeman, and he played basketball. He wasn't good, but he played. <laughs> right. right, Manny. <laughs> right, Manny. When, when you come in the Rucker at Dykeman, exactly. you know what I'm saying? When you doing that? Until you do that, we can't have the same conversation. But now, all, all, all jokes aside, though, you know, uh, kudos to Manny. Like I said, he's the first Battle Hall of Fame. If this is the last time we saw him in the ring, as fight fans, we do appreciate what he brought to the sport. All, all jokes aside, right. we, we we never we can never take that away from him. Legend, one of the greatest to ever lace the gloves up. Absolutely. Let's uh, transition to the guy who's the number one pound for pound fighter right now, and that is the redhead from Mexico, Canelo Alvarez. Uh, he has officially set the date, November 6th. He'll be taking on Caleb Plant, 
to unify the super middleweight division. History will be made because whoever wins this fight will be the first ever uh, undisputed champion at, of the super middleweight division. Uh, Canelo has been on a quest to make this happen, and it looks like he may be able to make it happen within a year. He has mowed down all the competition. But Caleb Plant, he looked pretty confident yesterday in, in his talk. I, and again, I know he was just talking. Trip, what do we make of this upcoming fight? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, bro, I don't see it going any other way but to Canelo Alvarez. And and, I, and I'm saying that respect, respectfully to Caleb Plant. I just, it's levels to this, man. Pac, and like you said, Pacquiao is on a tear. He's on fire right now. And I just, I don't see him slowing down. I don't, and if he does, it's, it, I don't think Caleb Plant is the guy. I think the only guy, honestly, that could have really stopped Canelo was Triple G. And we saw how that worked out. So, and I don't think, I don't think uh, Caleb Plant is on Triple G's level. So I think this is going to be an easy one for, for, uh, for Canelo. I agree. Uh, Caleb Plant is a good fighter, but he doesn't possess the power that's going to be necessary to stop Canelo from coming forward. And as you mentioned, Triple G is a prime example of that because all these other middleweights, the moment they felt Canelo's power, it's been a different fight, right? We saw it with, with Billy Joe Saunders, where Billy Joe tried to box him. And Canelo just knew all I got to do is once I land one of these, this fight is going to be over. And he broke his eye socket. So Caleb Plant is a tall challenge in front of you. Um, I wish him the best because, like I said, he is a good young fighter. Good luck. But you, yeah, you, you up in you in there against the best right now. And you're going to have to come with a hell of a game plan to be able to upset Canelo Alvarez on, in November. I know once we get closer, we'll give more fight predictions, but it, it's going to be a, a hell of a fight for him to try to, to win. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, shout out to to Javante Davis. He is okay. Uh, his plane had some some complications this uh this this weekend. Went down, uh, but he is actually okay. He went live uh, just to show that he was good, showing the plane and everything at the you know with with a with a uh, stop that. Yeah, scary situation. Uh, I saw Kodak Black was on the plane with him. Uh, Javante had his daughter because I saw the picture when he was boarding the plane. He had his young daughter with him. So thankfully, everyone. Uh, was able to come away unharmed. And I think no major injuries were reported. So, you know, thankfully on that, man, it's, it's a great young talent, but more importantly, you know, a lot of good lives on that plane that, you know, you would hate to see it lose like that. That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, and one more shout out too, before we transition off of boxing, the grandson of Muhammad Ali, who yes. most people do consider the GOAT, had his professional debut, impressive debut, and he was wearing his grandfather's shorts, man. Shout out to him. Facts, absolutely. Listen, you got you got that name uh because you know your your father is looked upon as the goat and there's a lot of people that that look at, at Layla Ali as the as the female goat so this is there's a lot of legacy right there that you got on, on both spectrums so I'm gonna wish the young man a lot of luck I'm gonna wish him a long prosperous career and uh you're starting off on the right foot there you go. Much respect to him. And we hope he has a great career in the sport of boxing, man. Um, let's get into some NBA talk, Trip. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The schedules officially came out. I see you got your yellow on. <laughs> I, I, I know what that means. You, mm -hmm. You're in Laker mode. I'm happy. Uh, happy. The, the, let's, let's start with opening day. We ain't going to dissect the whole schedule. Obviously, it's a long season. Can we talk Christmas Day too, at least? We can. Yeah, we can do both. Right. Um, so opening night, I think the NBA did a wonderful job with scheduling the opening night. Uh, Brooklyn kicks off against Milwaukee, which this seems like it might become a little bit of a rivalry right here because we know the comments they claim KD made about Giannis and then Giannis made the comments after winning the championship. Harden and, and the Nets now have come out and said, look, everybody knows who would want to chip if, if we was healthy. Yeah. They kick it off and that's going to be the night the Bucks get their rings. And then the nightcap of that one should be super exciting as well. The new look Lakers going up against Golden State who for the first time, probably in two and a half years, are going to be healthy now. Clay Thompson's expected to be out. So they got this mix of veteran championship core along with these young guys they're bringing in. Kuminga, um, the young boy, uh, man, now his, his name slips on mind now that, that they drafted last year, the big man. Uh, James Wiseman. James Wiseman. So what do we make of the opening day schedule? And then Christmas is highlighted with some great games as well. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited. I already, I told you uh, last week, I already put my, my, my $10 down for 2K22. It is about to go down. Oh my goodness. This Lakers 
Warriors game. I'm so hyped about this game right here. I think this is actually going to be a very exciting game. I think it's going to be a close game that's going to c- come down uh, to the end because anytime you put LeVon, Le, um, LeBron James versus Steph Curry, it's going to be an exciting basketball game. They're healthy. Uh, the Lakers have Westbrook and, and Carmelo Anthony and, and you know all the other uh, new guys that they brought in, Malik Monk, Trevor Ariza. Um, they brought back uh, Tucker. So I think that game is going to be an incredible back and forth game. And I think we're going to see like in, you know, with the other game that Nets versus Milwaukee, I think we're going to see like those old nineties Knicks heat games, like one of those physical uh, Indiana Knicks or, or, or Knicks bulls. I think we're going to see one of those games with those two teams because, you know, Milwaukee is going to come into this season with the chip on their shoulder, winning the championship, you know what I mean? Um, and then beating the Nets to get to, you know, on on well, on their way to the NBA Finals, but they beat the Nets in the seven-game series. Listen, whatever you want to call it, we know injuries pop up all the time, so we can't give – we got to call it clean across the board. You know what I mean? Like, you, at the end of the day, you still had Kevin Durant out there. You had half of James Harden out there. Um, but, you know, Milwaukee still got the job done. You mentioned all the back and forth that's been going on with uh, the alleged KD comments that were about Giannis. But Giannis talking about, you know, getting it done without a super team. Uh, James Harden going back and forth. This game is going to get very chippy. It's going to be very physical. Um, it's definitely going to be some technicals in this game because the I, I don't think these two teams like each other at all. Uh, but I think it's going to be a great game. I think that series this season, and then again, when we get into the playoffs, because I do see them facing each other again at some point or another uh, in, in NBA playoffs, that is going to be a great back and forth this season. Absolutely. I think they're the two best teams in the East. Yes. Um, they gave us a classic playoff series. And like you said, I expect it to be chippy now because Brooklyn in their heart feels like, and like most people, they are the best team uh-huh. in the East, if not the whole NBA and they should have won a chip. And Milwaukee on the flip side is like, well, we did it. So now you got to come through us. It's going to be, it's going to be very chippy. Um, I'm so looking forward. I think I, and I hate to say it, man, as a Nick fan, I think Kevin Durant is, is shaping up to have an MVP caliber season. I just think he's going to play with a certain chip on his shoulder. Um, the Lakers are going to have a chip on his shoulder. We, we can't overlook Braun right now because Braun has been very vocal during this off season. He didn't like some of the, critique of how this roster was put together you know he said oh we're old we're washed you're gonna see how washed we are when the season comes then there was a recent poll that went out ranking the best players in the nba braun got no first place votes uh he's upset about that too so is this are we seeing braun who's on a mission to to show everybody not only am i the best player but we're the best team in the league i think russell westbrook's gonna have a chip on his shoulder because russ has been counted out a little bit as well um I'm interested to see these matchups, man. I think these are playoff caliber matchups to kick off the season. The last time I'll say this, the last time uh, LeBron got motivated um, because of some things that was going down, the Lakers won a championship. That Um, was, yes, that was two years ago. He's got to stay healthy though, bro. Does father time finally catch up to him is going to be the question. Um, I think LeBron does stay healthy this season. Um, I think really who, who who I'm concerned more with would be Anthony Davis um, and his health. He's actually got to stay healthy. I think he will, though, just because, you know, lat, coming into last season, it was a, you know, they went the farthest going to the finals. And then they, they, they had the shortest turnaround. Um, you know, Anthony Davis already isn't used to making those deep playoff runs like that anyway. Um, so to come back so short, he was already a little sluggish starting off the season anyway. So uh, I think I think guys will stay healthy. I think the addition of Russell Westbrook will actually help guys staying healthy just because, you know, Westbrook's energy level is off the charts anyway. And during the regular season, you can let uh, Russell Westbrook and the rest of those guys take the lead and give LeBron, you know, what I'm saying a little bit more of a rest. Because they, you know, they're gonna be good enough to win on 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 most nights anyway. You know, I mean, if if LeBron takes extra five ten minute rest here here and there, they're still gonna be a, an amazing team with Westbrook. Like like you know, we still gotta give, and you know, you you and I have. 
But you got to give Westbrook his credit. We're still talking about an MVP who has averaged a triple double four out of the last five years. Like I get it, you know, all of these the 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 Westbrook can't shoot or the Westbrook is a radic guy. But at the end of the day, Westbrook is still an MVP in this league. He's been to an NBA Finals before. He's averaged a triple-double several times over. He's a multiple-time All-Star. He's had All-NBA appearances. Like, we can't sit up here and act like Russell Westbrook is not one of the top guys in the NBA for the for the last, you know, five, six seasons. Maybe even a little bit, a little bit longer. He's been one of the he's been one of the top guys. Like he's not he's not a slouch. And then you know for the 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 the, the three point shooters once again the last two championship winners were not three point shooting teams. <clears throat> and the Lakers have shooters. You know what I mean? They 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 definitely did bring in some shooters to fill out that that roster. They may actually make one more move. I'm hoping they do. I'm hoping they they, they want to bring in over JJ Redick. If they can bring him in um for the for the the minimum, but I, that team is is gonna be really good and and I think you know all of those all oh, the Lakers Westbrook is gonna mess everything up. They're not gonna be, no, they're gonna be they, they're gonna prove them wrong. They're gonna go to the playoffs. They're gonna have a deep run in the playoffs. Most likely, it's gonna be a finals run, barring any injuries. If the Lakers are healthy going into the playoffs, they will be in the finals. Yeah, that's the biggest thing with them, I, and I said that from the jump. I wasn't sure how they were building a roster until they made the other moves. Malik Monk, Carmelo Anthony, Trevor Ariza, um, Wayne Ellinson. Once they added that shooting, then I, I liked it a lot more. I'm not going to front. In the beginning, I was critical. I, I'm on record as saying, I want to see how this is all going to work yes. with Westbrook, LeBron, and AD. But once you add those shooters, it makes sense. And, you know, you're right. You can't ignore the fact, no matter how you feel about Russ, he's still one of the top 25 players in the league. Yeah. And the Lakers have three of the top 25 guys along with a solid supporting cast because now you bring Dwight in as another big, right? You, you Again, you bring in Melo now who can play the stretch four and it's going to probably give you nine to 12 points tonight. You got a, a young athletic guard like Malik Monk who can shoot the ball and create a little bit. Uh, you got Trevor Reza who, though he's not the, the Trevor Reza of old, he's still a solid vet who can give you defense. And if you add J.J. Redick, it's just another shooter. So I think the Lakers are the favorite. Say that again? And Kendrick Nunn. Well, Nunn. Kendrick Nunn... It's going to be interesting how they use Kendrick Nunn because I think if it, if it isn't Westbrook, it's going to be Braun handling the ball. Yes. And then they're going to have to figure out the lineups based around those two guys. So I don't know. Kendrick Nunn may have his moments. I just don't know. If, in, in the pecking order, I don't think he's playing over Malik Monk. I don't think he's playing over Horton Tucker. He's not playing over Rush. You know what I'm saying? Like That might be the, the tricky part for him. Good young talent. I just don't know how he fits with them. But ultimately, they are the favorites to come out the West. And as you mentioned, it's health. If, if they're able to manage the minutes, Frank Vogel can figure out the rotations and preserve those bodies for the playoffs. Nobody's beating them in a seven game series. You're not beating that team four times in a series, if fully healthy. Now, if they're banged up, obviously it's a different conversation, but we're a long ways away from that. Um, we also mentioned Christmas Day. Christmas Day is highlighted with some great games. It kicks off with my Knicks against the Hawks. That looks like that's turning into a little bit of a rivalry of young up and coming teams as well. I'm interested to see. I'm I'm interested to see my Knicks in general because Kemba looks happy to be home. Evan Fournier, we we've upgraded the talent, but Trey Young is no joke, man. We we know that. We saw that last year in the playoffs. Um, Boston, think, Milwaukee. I think uh, I'm sorry, I didn't cut you up, but I think the Knicks win this game on Christmas because uh, you know Kemba wasn't there. Yeah, I think yeah. Kemba's gonna be a difference because if you think about it, right? You know, in the playoffs, you know, it was kind of like. It turned into Randall was their guy. And then when he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? You had Derrick Rose who was putting in a little bit of effort, but it just wasn't enough. But when you bring Kimba into that situation, that changes things a lot because you have to guard Kimba. Like, you, you just, there's no way around it. You have to guard him. I think the Knicks got so much better. Um, I still think they'll finish fourth just because, you know, I just don't think they'll, they'll, they're going to, they're past the, the, the Sixers. The, the Bucks or or the, the Nets with, with these moves, but I love all of the moves. I think honestly, I think the Knicks win. I was actually excited. I I texted the, the 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 screenshot of the the schedule on Christmas to my dad. I was like, yo, they got your guys playing back on Christmas again. So I, I love it, man. I want to see it. Yeah, I, I want to see it too, man. Like I said, I know as we get closer, we'll give more in depth predictions. But I do agree. I mean, uh, as much as I love what Reggie Bullock brought for the team last year. 
Evan Fournier and Kemba are upgrades over Reggie Bullock and Alfred Payton. Now you got additional guys who can handle the ball and can shoot. And like you said, it's not as easy to double Randall anymore now. Now you can put shooters around him and make that happen. But at, like I said, as we get closer to Christmas Day, I know we're, we're going to break that game down. Um, Boston, Milwaukee should be interesting. Golden State, Phoenix, that'll probably be a high scoring game. Nets, Lakers. I mean, possible finals preview. It's the primetime game. It's the eight o'clock game on Christmas Day. So that gives everyone more than enough time to get your plate, probably get about a little hour and a half trap nap in there, and then be ready for the game. Yep. And then the nightcap, after, after we're exhausted from watching Lakers in Brooklyn, I mean, we get probably the, the youngest star in the game, Luca, going against Donovan Mitchell, and that, that'll probably be a shootout as well. Star in the game. Yeah, that's going to yeah, be Yeah, so the NBA has, has spoiled us again on Christmas Day, man. So, shout out to Adam Silver, man. You got the job done once again. Yes, sir. He, he's definitely did that. Uh, one team that isn't on the Christmas Day slate, though, and you, and you mentioned them in terms of rankings in the Eastern Conference, the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid gets a new contract extension. Well-deserved. Uh, yeah. Embiid was a, was a finalist, uh, MVP finalist last year and on one leg was out there averaging 30. Yes. But on the flip side of that, Ben Simmons now is in returning calls. He is already let it be known he wants out. And then we get the, the leaked videos of him shooting threes in an empty gym with John Morant. I mean, what, what, what do we make? At least he's shooting. It's I not mean, the we, game where it counts at, but at least he is shooting. You got it's the little things, man. You got to take it step by step, man. I, I guess, but I mean, I, I think we've seen these videos before, right? I, I feel like this is like the third off season we've seen videos of him shooting three pointers. And and I think two K put out his three point rating at zero. Damn, I, I, I got to <laughs> I mean, if you don't shoot it, what are they rating it off of? If you don't yeah, shoot it. Yeah, that's true. Damn, that's crazy. Zero? What, what do we make of Philly? Because on paper, I mean, they've got top five talent. There ain't many teams that are better than them on paper. But this whole Ben situation, it seems like it's getting out of hand right now. What do we make of this? Bro, I'm st- like, I'm still confused because I'm just like, you know, Ben Simmons could average... 20 points a game without shooting a three-pointer, right? Minimum, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, when you look at, at and obviously I know he, he runs the, the floor for them, but he's 6'10", but when you, if you look at guys like Shaq, uh, who averaged 25, 28 a game, never shot a three-pointer, you know what I mean? So you can score without shooting the three. He just doesn't try at all. And I don't get it. Like if he, if if he only, you can go to the basket every time down and just lay the ball up or dunk it and get your get the points up that way. Um, but you know now it's just it's, it's just too far gone. Um, I mean I'm sure you know Ben is probably you know in his feelings a little bit because you know guys kind of threw him under the bus. Doc Rivers and and, and uh, Joel and B during the press conferences after they were losing. So I'm, I'm sure that didn't sit well with him. And then it's pretty much you know because. He had he wasn't shooting. It's like the blame goes to Ben Simmons because if you had he at least took that one layup on that on that on that play, you know things might be might be different. You guys lost to a team that talent wise you guys are light years ahead of. You know what I mean? Shout out to to the Atlanta Hawks because they they overperformed. But there's no way that 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 Philadelphia should should lose that series when when you have uh, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, you're coached by Doc Rivers. There's no way that, that they should lose that series. Um, they've, I, they're going to have to move them at some point, uh, but they can't be greedy. They were trying to get outlandish offers for Ben Simmons, and that's probably not going to happen because his stock is down right now. You can't ask for, you know, ask for the whole chocolate factory when his his stock is down, like he's coming off of the worst playoff series he's played, and I and I, and I get it, he hasn't played in that many. But the last thing we've seen of him was horrible, and that's all the talk has been about was how horrible he was in that Atlanta series. He was scared to shoot, he couldn't make free throws. You know what I mean? So they 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 they're gonna have to make a move. Um, honestly. I would try to go with Golden State. You know, they may be able to to work something out with Portland for for CJ, but they're gonna have to move him. And 
they're going to have to come down on that asking price. This isn't like when the Knicks are trying to trade for Melo, you know, peak Melo. He doesn't have that type of trade value right now. So they're going to have to scale it back and because they can get a, a decent haul. They can definitely get a, an all-star in return for Ben Simmons, but they're going to have to take it back a little bit. Yeah, they, they're in a difficult spot because uh, just last summer, remember, they had the opportunity to get James Harden and they didn't want to move Ben Simmons. And so now, like you said, his, his value is a little low, but he's still under contract for four years. Actually, and at his age, one. what happened? I bet you they regret that one. Oh, yeah. We, well, we talked about that at the time. We said that that would be the defining trade of the organization, right? If, if Ben continued to be what we thought he could become, and we even talked about it with the Ballers Journal, Ben could be the X factor in the Sixers winning it all. Yeah. And unfortunately, they got bad Ben Simmons in the playoffs. They didn't get good Ben Simmons. So, you know, a, a trade for a Harden type player probably is not going to be there. To get Dame for Ben is... I don't know if Portland does it straight up. I think they might want something else just because Dame is so much better in terms of being the player in the trade. Yeah. Um, but if, if you're Philly, you're, you're screwed either way because he signed in the contract for four years. So if I'm trading for a, a good player, a all-star caliber player, but maybe he's only signed for another year or two, now I'm stuck with the burden of now having to renegotiate a new contract when I already have been under contract for four years. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what they do. And... I've thrown out different ideas of what they might be able to trade for. I think they're going to end up holding on to Ben to the last minute. I think they're going to try to figure it out and they're going to try to see if they can get him back in and then come trade deadline. If, if it's not working, then you try to move him at that point and you make the move. But even then you run the risk of you split the locker room now and you take a team that had title aspirations. And now you're no longer a contender because the locker room is split between your two superstars. So yeah. They're, they're in a in a very tough spot. As a Knicks fan, I love it, to be honest, because they are in our division. So that's, that's, that's one less thing I got to worry about. But as a fan of the sport of basketball, I hate to see it because I, I truly think Joel Embiid is a unique talent. And it's unfortunate that Embiid every year, we have <laughs> asked him to change his game, right? Get in shape, Joel. Shoot more threes. Be more physical. Be more dominant. And all these things that we've asked of him, he's taken on that challenge. And yet... Only thing we're asking from Ben is to be more aggressive. And Ben can't do that. Like, Joel is shooting threes because Ben won't shoot threes. So, or, at or some point, anything, judge, or, or, won't, right, or won't shoot anything. So, at some point, you got to give Joel the help he needs so that he can carry you to the places you expect him to carry you to. Absolutely. That's it. That's, that's it. Like, yeah. Then I'll need <laughs> That's it. It, it. it is what it is, man. Let's get into a little football talk because, like we talked about at the top of the show, we're oh, about three weeks away. Before we jump into football, really quick, shout out to Kevin Garnett. Uh, the subject's going to be retiring at number five jersey. Yes. Make shout two. out to KG. Um, you know, just 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 throw it out there. We still ain't forget forgave you for what you said to Melo about Lala. We ain't forgave you for that. <laughs> but but we rock with you though, KG. We rock with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You one of the few bosses and players that we rock with like that. So we just going, we're going, we, we'll figure that part out later on, but kudos to, to KG. He should have his, his number retired in two places as well. We'll, we'll get into that another time. You know what I'm saying? Um, NFL talk, three weeks away. I know you're a Giant fan. You're happy to have Saquon back, but your other team, the Baltimore Ravens, for some reason, they take preseason more serious than everyone else. They haven't lost a preseason game in like three years. Yeah. Uh, carry it over to the to the regular season and get back to the Super Bowl. I, I just don't know. I don't know who takes preseason football more serious than the Ravens. Hey, somebody's got to do it, okay? Uh, apparently, <laughs> somebody somebody's got to do it. But kudos to the Ravens. I'm expecting a big year from Lamar this year. You and I both like him. We both expect big things from him this season. So we hope this is the season that it all comes together for him. Uh, on the on the flip side, my Colts. I'm I'm happy to report. Carson Wentz and Quentin Nelson, who both had foot surgeries three weeks ago, are expected to be in practice this week. And they're saying Carson Wentz might be ready possibly week one, but more than likely looking like week two. So that's the blessing for us because we thought we were going to miss him for at least the first four to six weeks. Yeah, absolutely. That's an amazing turnaround because it was it was going to look real shaky because – you were going to have to make a decision at quarterback one way or another. So this kind of, you know, takes off that pressure because, you know, the options were Nick Foles, who 
you know, you can't go there with it. I mean, unless you're going to bring back Kaepernick for, for a week or two to, to try to, you know what I'm saying? But I think that ship has sailed already. So, yeah, you know, that's – this saved the Colts. Yeah, um, I, I don't put much stock in the preseason football because, again, it's, it's guys who are just trying to make the team, right? Most starters don't stay on the field long, and by halftime you got the third and fourth string guys out there. But in this particular instance, I did pay attention not only because I'm a Colt fan, but because, like you said, we never made the move for, for Nick Foles or anybody else. They kind of just said, look, either Jacob Eason or, or Sam Ellinger, one of you guys are going to win the job. And I've been watching both these young guys. I like Sam Ellinger when he came out of Texas. Bit of a gunslinger, turns the ball over a little bit too much for my liking, but strong arm, a guy who looks comfortable. And same thing with Jacob Eason. When they drafted him in the fourth round uh, last season, not this past draft, but last draft, um, again, another guy who's super athletic, strong arm, but turns the ball over. Yeah. So I guess the Colts internally felt like we're going to give the young guys a shot, which I'm okay with. But now hearing this news that Carson Wentz might be ready for week two, I can understand why they did that. Yeah, which is, hey, listen, even if, you know, you, you can you can throw the young guys out there week one, you know, one of those two guys, you know, get a little get a little early game for to join them until Wentz comes back. And you know what I mean? So at least you, now you got a little bit of game tape on, on one of those guys, at least, you know, from from the, the, the week one game. And hey, who knows? You know, you might you might actually get the win still because, you know, they have a good team surrounding the quarterback position. So if you can just be a solid game manager and not turn over the football, which I know you just kind of spoke about, but if you can manage this game without having that, I mean, you're going to have the security blanket of having, uh, you know, a really good young running back. You got some good receivers that can catch the football. So just don't turn over the ball. And I'm sure the Colts will probably lean a little bit more on the running game in week one, just to take a little bit more of that pressure off of whichever one of those young guys starts. So, you know, you could you could be good until Carson Wentz gets back. And then from there, you know, Carson Wentz, who is back with the guy who he had his best season under, and, you know, the Colts are still a, 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 a playoff team if everybody is, is, is healthy and on the field. So who knows? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think they definitely plan on uh, leaning on the running game. And I think that, that uh, game plan is going to stick even when Carson Wentz comes back. Um, you know, you got Jonathan Taylor, who was the number two running back in rushing yards last year. And then they brought back Marlon Mack, who the year before was a thousand yard back. Like, you know, you don't keep two thousand yard backs on your on your on your team unless you plan on running the ball a lot, similar to what Cleveland does with Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I think the Colts are going to try to follow kind of that same model, run the ball a lot. And I really like what I've been seeing from Michael Pittman Jr. Michael Pittman Jr. to me is, is look like he's going to take that next step up. He missed most of the first half of last year dealing with some injuries. By playoff time, he was a reliable target next to T.Y. Hilton. They've been featuring him as the number one guy, which, which is a little surprising to me because you still got T.Y. on the roster, but they love his size on the outside. Pause. Um, always got to throw the pause out there. Uh, <laughs> um, one other thing, too, man. Trip, I, I got I, I to gotta, I gotta call you out on this, man. All right. Like I said, we're close to the NFL season. You know what I'm saying? For anybody who listens to the show, make sure you're following us on social media, of course. You know, Trip Trip has been very braggadocious lately. You know, I saw you put up the the screenshot of Madden, which just came out. Happy Madden Day to everyone out there who, who enjoys the game the way we do. But then you had the real fans, real talk fantasy trophy there. I it, everything gets seen, Trip. We're not gonna pretend like you did oh, strategically. Oh, that was a light flex. <laughs> you strategically put it there. I did. I did. I did. I right. Know, I did. So. Where else would the trophy go, though? Understandable. You you get your opportunity to boast. We know we we run in the real fans, real talk fantasy league again. Are there any open slots? Uh, as of right now, we are completely uh, done. Um, actually, shout out to to Nesto over at the Hot Seat Podcast. Uh, he actually sent the 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 video that I, that we posted to his guys. Two of his guys actually hit me up for the the, the one spot. Um, so we wound up, I had to give it to the first, uh, to, to, to the message I saw first, but I did tell uh, the, the other uh, gentleman that if he had a, a second uh, player so that everything would be even on and we don't have to worry about trying to find somebody else, then I, 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 would, I wouldn't mind opening it up to, to 14 teams as long as he has the, you know, teams to make it even because you can't do the draft if, uh, if, the, if it's uneven. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him another uh, – couple of days to to send me that if not we're, we're locked and loaded either way 
Uh, the draft is set for uh, Tuesday, uh, March 7th. September at, 7th. I'm, wow, I said March 7th. Excuse yeah, me. I'm way all over the place. Bro. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> all the way Excuse me. I'm sorry. September Tuesday, September 7th at 7.30 p.m. The Real Fans Real Talk Fantasy Football Draft is going down. If you are in the league, make sure you are ready. Um, shout out to the ladies that's in the league as well. Um, they've been trying to get me to add more ladies in, but I just I haven't been able to find any. So, ladies, you know, next year, if you guys are into fantasy football, please send me your information so I can add you add you into the, into the league. I love the fact that we got ladies playing fantasy football with us because you know, listen, it's just it's, it's different, and the ladies be doing their thing too. You know what I mean? So. Uh, you know, shout out to but shout out to everybody that's in the, in the tournament. A couple of past winners, uh, Harmony, uh, Marcus, Jonathan, who have won the, the league in the past. But you know, you're only as good as your last game. And then the last game that was Trip Young playing in the last game. Actually, I beat uh, shout out to uh, on, on, on the board sports, I beat uh, Sean in the Super Bowl uh, game last year to earn that trophy that you're talking about, Eric. And um, I, you know, again, I'm ready to defend my my title. The trophy is there. I'm looking forward to adding a second trophy to 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 my to you know to go on that table right next to the PS5. So when you see that, you know that Trip Young, you know, is the new fantasy football guru. Uh, I, I love it, man. I, I thought I thought you were gonna hit me with a Tom Brady line and be like, you know, I haven't done anything yet. I haven't done anything yet. I'm just, I'm just sorry. We gotta win more. We gotta, win. but now nah, kudos to you, bro. You are the defending champ. Like you said, it goes down Tuesday, September 7th, the official draft. Um, and for those who follow the show, you know, and, and trip is different for you, obviously, because you're a host. But if you win the league, you get your opportunity on the show as well. So yeah. that's that's an added incentive um, for anybody who's in the league. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a great season of fantasy football as well. Um, let's talk a little baseball before we close out, trip. Let's do it. Because as you mentioned, your, your Yankees, they the hottest thing cooking right now. Nine straight games. Unfortunately, today was postponed. But, they I mean, they're getting everything going, man. Uh, the pitching is coming around. The hitting is coming around. Um, you're closing in on Tampa. You've, you've overtaken Boston for, for a second in the East. Uh, you got a stranglehold on the wild card right now. And you're trying to chase, chase down Tampa. This is the Yankee team we expected to see for most of the season. That's but it looks like they've really clicked over the last couple of weeks. Well, you know, what what happened was, so early in the season, we got hit by the injury bug, you know, and it's, and it's hard to, you know, when you, you're losing Stanton, Sanchez in and out of the lineup, Judge, and these are your, your your top guys. And then we got hit hard by COVID. Cold, oh, my goodness. Like, everybody went out. We we just made the trade for Anthony Rizzo, and he went out with <laughs> with the COVID protocols. So now, and shout out to, uh, to to Brian Cashman. I think he did an amazing job uh, at the trade deadline, bringing in Rizzo and Gallo. Um, you know, the the Yankees' batting order is scary. It is scary, bro. I, you know, be, I, being at the game the other day, you just and you looking at the at the, the names on the board, and it's just like, yo, we got some hitters in that lineup. Like I think this is this is the team you know like you said that that was projected to be a World Series contender at the beginning of the season. They are finally clicking at the right time. Uh, hopefully we can get Severino back. But you know the pitching has been been really well over the past couple of weeks. The bats have been have been moving. I'm really liking what I'm seeing, and they are the hottest thing in baseball right now. Looking to take that division. Um, I, you know, and I, and I just think, I, you know, cause sports, it's about that momentum. You know, I think they may even be able to take that, take that, uh, that division. I know it's going to be, it's going to be tough because they got a lot of games to go, but I, I love what the Yankees are doing. You know, I just, I want them to, I want them to get the division just because I don't want them to have to lose a rotation, uh, pitcher playing in a wild card game. So that's really my whole thing, but I think they can do it. I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, they, they got hot, and and you highlighted that that the uh, the moves that they made at the trade deadline, I think, sparked everything for them. Yes. Um, adding those left-handed power bats, uh, and by the way, Rizzo is a great defensive first baseman as well. Gallo's no shab, no 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 slouch in the outfield as well as a defensive glove 
But um, that that really changed everything for them. They're, they're hot. It's going to be tough to catch Tampa because I think Tampa's a very good team. It might be the best team in the American League. But nonetheless, the Yankees are in the mix. The Mets, on the other hand, they they fallen off a little bit. Um, right now, they, they got a big win today. Javi Baez came back. They're still waiting for Lindor. The news on DeGrom isn't good. He's probably still going to be out for another three to four weeks. Um, they put him on a 60-day IL, but that's retroactive to the time that he was originally put on. So he won't be eligible to come back probably to the second week in September. But the Mets are in trouble. Let's, let's call it what it is. They get an opportunity to get fat now that they come back home. Um, they got a three-game set with the Giants. And then they have something like, I think, uh, 15 games against the Nationals and Marlins, who are two of the worst teams in the National League. So they have an opportunity to get back in it, but they got to get healthy, man. I mean, uh, Conforto missed time this year, and he's he's been bad. Lindor's been out for two months at this point. DeGrom's been out for about two months. Like I said, they just got Javi Baez back. They've got to figure this thing out pretty quickly to get back in the race, man. And, and that's the thing. Like, literally, you know, what we saw with the Yankees is, is what can happen with the Mets. But it is, it's about that health. You guys, especially your top guys, have to be on the on on the field. You know, especially when you when you're talking about Jacob DeGrom, you know, who 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 may even be the best pitcher in baseball uh right now. That's a huge loss to not have him in your in your rotation, you know. And then when you when you when you look at the 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 big hitters that are, are missing as well, but you you know, like you said, they do have a good a uh, 15 game stretch where they got a lot of, you know, the, 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 the bottom teams. So they got, they yeah. have a chance, you know, get back into the wild card, man. Just, just get back into the wild card race and, you know, and, and make it to the playoffs. Once you win, man, you win. Yeah. That's what you got to do. You got to, you got to get yourself in the race and then make those last two weeks of the season competitive at that point. Like you said, cause then at that point you expect the ground to be back. You expect to be healthy and you take your chances, but you got to at least give yourself a shot, man. Um, before we transition off of baseball as well, we got to give a major shout out to Miguel Cabrera, one of the most feared right-handed hitters in all of baseball during his time in the game. Mm -hmm. He joined the 500 home run club today. Uh, a guy who himself the last couple of years has dealt with some injuries, but if you know, you know, and early Miguel Cabrera, yes. he was like a young Manny Ramirez out there winning. He won a world series with the Marlins. He played another world series that he lost with Detroit phenomenal player before the injuries hit but 500 home runs solidifies his spot in, in Cooperstown so facts. shout out to him facts yeah facts he's, he's definitely going going into the hole um you know that that 500 mark that's different that's different <laughs> I put you in upper echelon uh, of, of, of hitters right there in, in baseball and that pushes you up the rank because in baseball we you know we definitely put a lot on home runs <laughs> over home run <laughs> so that definitely pushes you up a little bit uh congratulations on 500 man Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trip. before we go, though, you want to shout out the sponsors? Facts. I definitely got to do that. Big shout out to Petro Home Services. Shout out to Kmart. Shout out to the Rosado Firm. Of course, shout out to uh, to, to Soundview Liquors. Uh, the good folks over at Delancey Street. Big shout out to them. And of course, uh, of course sophisticated mindset, sending that wardrobe in, keeping the guys fresh. Um, make sure you guys are following us on all our social media, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, Facebook.com forward slash for the fans productions, and subscribe to that YouTube channel. Keep telling y'all this is YouTube.com forward slash for the fans productions. And uh, of course, guys, do not worry if you're not in New York City on Thursday nights from 8 to 9 p.m., you can still watch from anywhere in the world. Just go to realfansrealtalk.com. Click that red button on the homepage and you can watch from anywhere in the world. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, any final thoughts, Trip, before we wrap up? Uh, you know what? I'm 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 a, I'm a shout out. Uh, uh, we got a little, little bit a little bit of W E man. Shout out to uh, okay. Brock Lesnar. He made his return. Uh, John Cena was back at Summer Slam. I had uh, my my cousin Jonathan was is out in Vegas right now, so I got him on the streets reporting for me. Uh, but uh, Roman Reigns definitely beat John Cena at Summer Slam. But uh, so shout out to him, and again shout out to Brock Lesnar. I'm actually excited that Brock Lesnar is back. We got in the past three weeks, we just got John Cena and Brock Lesnar back. That's big for WWE fans. Yes, sir. I, I saw CM Punk came back as well. Oh, on, on that's, CM Punk. that's right. Yes, yeah. so a, lot, a lot of the legends been coming back. And I forgot to mention this in, in the baseball news. Shout out to the young boy from the Bronx, Andrew Velasquez. Hit his first home run for the Yankees yesterday at home in front of his family. 
Yeah. I know that must have been an amazing feeling for the young boy. He's the first Yankee who's actually from the Bronx. Yeah. That was one of the and, things they had up at like the fun fact at the stadium was was that big shout out to him, man. I'm big big shout out to him, man. Um, but we'll leave it right there for myself and my main man Trip Young. Again, Sanchez show, real fans, real talk. We out of here. Peace. Type of blend backing up misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from eight to nine for the older folks. So even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com.